All right, looking back on this day, April 1st, 1971, Charles Schwab and two partners who had been writing an investment newsletter together entered the brokerage business, officially incorporating as First Commander Corp. Within two years, Schwab had bought out his partners and renamed the company after himself. Fortuitous timing indeed, because barely two years later, the SEC unintentionally created a launching pad for Schwab and the discount brokerage model. Remember, the New York Stock Exchange, since its creation at that time, required members to charge a minimum commission rate. Back then, that largely meant individual investors got stuck with high fixed commissions while institutional investors secretly negotiated lower ones. The SEC in 1975 changed that, banning fixed income commissions, a decision that curiously led many Wall Street firms to actually raise fees in order to pad their profits. But Schwab swam against the tide, slashing the price of a stock trade on the platform by as much as 70 percent and then setting up a toll free telephone number to educate the masses. In one year, Schwab's revenue more than tripled. By 1979, the company had 90,000 accounts, and by 1980, like a grizzly bear perched above a salmon run, that company was ready when that decades-long industry migration to retail investing kicked off, driving scores of mom-and-pop investors into the arms of Schwab. Unfortunately, that torrential growth almost did kill the company, and after a failed IPO, it agreed in 1983 to sell itself to Bank of America. That relationship had lasted just four years. A frustrated Chuck Schwab led a management buyout and took the firm public on his own. And for years after that, it was, and to a certain extent still is, the gold standard of retail investing, even today finding ways to stun its competitors. That includes back in 2019 when it slashed trading commissions for online clients to zero from $4.95 per trade, a long way away from the discounted fee it used to charge 20 years ago at $19.95 back in 2004, or $29.95 in the years prior. That zero fee strategy, it was a big bet that Schwab's traditional bank deposit business could alone drive profits. It was a strategy that did work when interest rates were pinned near zero, but of course a strategy that unraveled when the Fed rapidly raised rates. That pushed Schwab deposits lower, unrealized losses higher, and the stock plunged 50% in barely a year. The company's earnings report last January showed continued declines in profit, new assets, and deposits. But the CEO, Walt Bettinger, said on that conference call that he anticipates steadily improving financial results throughout the year and a very strong exit into 2025. We're going to find out soon enough whether Walt got it right. The company's next earnings report slated to hit just about two weeks from today.